Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Blueprint tutorial series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at functions, macros and events inside of Unreal Engine 4. They have a really important process, a really important purpose rather, and are going to be something that's going to be used quite commonly. So one thing I do want to mention before we go any further with this video is you need to make sure you are in your project settings and your character within your maps and modes your default pawn class is set to tutorial character. Once you've done that open up your tutorial character and we can start working with functions, macros and events. So essentially these three things have a very similar purpose and their purpose is to essentially be a wrapper and contain a bunch of code and you're essentially going to call that macro, call that event or that function rather than having to write out that same piece of code over and over and over again. So essentially it's going to contain code and it's going to be a single node that you can simply call. And there's three different ways of doing things and that's functions, macros and events and they all have slightly different purposes, their own sort of drawbacks and I'm going to be explaining these as I go on through this video. So the first one that I'm going to show you is a function and if you want to create a function on the left hand side in any blueprint, for me I'm working within my tutorial character, you can press, uh, press plus function. Once you've done this and given it a name, so test underscore function, it's going to take you to this little graph. And essentially anything that you put in here is going to be fired off when you reference that function later on. So what I'm going to do is actually print a string and I'm actually going to print this string five times. And the way I'm going to do this is by using a for loop like I showed you earlier on in the series. So the last index, I'm just going to quickly set this to four and have the loop body hooked up to this and I'm just going to get it to say function. So essentially if I call this function it's going to run any code that is hooked up inside of this. And I'll show you just how easy it is to get back to this. So if we go back to our main event graph at the top here, if we now just simply double click test function on the left hand side it will show you exactly what's within that function. From our begin play, what I could do instead of writing out that code that I've just done again, I can simply type in test underscore function and with this it's going to do that for me. So if I compile this on begin play it's going to run that code that we've put in there. So if we press play you can see in the top left hand corner it did say function five times. Now moving on, I can do something similar with a macro. To create a macro, you just add plus macro and it's going to do something similar in here. For this, I'm just going to give it the name test underscore macro and then from our inputs and outputs, you are just going to put your stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my code in here. So the code that I'm going to add is simply going to be um, for loop and we are going to tell this to print string once again and then the string for this one is simply going to be macro and then the last index once again just set this to 4 and then just make sure this is hooked up to your input and your output just like this so your start point should be your input and then your out point Sorry, and then your endpoint should be your output. If we compile this, go back to the event graph, what we can do now is just right click, type in test underscore macro, and you should get something that looks a little bit like this. Hook it up to begin play, and hit compile, press play, and what we should have is it's saying macro five times. So it's something very similar, and it's doing exactly the same thing. Now the last one that I wanted to show you is an event. So an event can be created slightly differently, you don't use anything on here. Instead what you do is you right click and type in add custom event. 
With this, give it any name you like. For me, I'm going to give this the name test underscore event. And this event, anything I hook up to this is going to be your code that's going to be fired off. Now, bear in mind, the difference with this event is the code is still going to be in your main event graph, so you're still going to have to see it. Whereas the macros and the functions, they are going to hide away your code later on. Now, there's still some differences between the two of those. I'll explain those for now. So for this event, what we're going to do is just add in that for loop like we did earlier on. Test it, uh, last index to four and loop body is just going to print string with the name event so that you can see this nice and easily. Now, as for firing this off, all we've got to do is drag out from begin play and just type in test underscore event. And what this is going to do is fire off the code that is in here and we can see everything that's all hooked up. So hit compile, hit play, and this time it's saying event five times instead. So you've seen how to make these and you sort of should have a good and solid understanding of exactly how they work. Now, one thing or a couple of things I'm gonna mention are the drawbacks to help you understand why you might wanna use some of these over um, you know, the, the others. So what I'm going to do is start off by talking a little bit about the events. Now with the events, you have a bit more code on the screen. It's not going to be as clean and tidy as it is with the functions. What you can do with an event, however, is you can use time oriented uh, bloom, uh, blueprints. So for example, if you wanted to add a delay, just before this loop and this print string, what you could do is you could essentially add a two second delay. If I hit compile, hit play, you're gonna see it's gonna wait and then do what I need it to do. Now with a function, if I open this up, right click and try and add in a delay into here, it's not going to let me. So one thing you've got to think about when you're writing your code or planning your code is that functions, you are simply not able to use time oriented nodes in here. So if you need to add, add something like a delay, which is quite common, you cannot do it as part of a function. If you move on to a macro, so if you open up your test macro at the top here, you can right click and add a delay in here. And personally, macros are probably going to be my go-to for this, but it just depends on your needs and you've got to think about that as you go in and write your code. There's very different, uh, very different ways and there's a lot to think about. Um, and also a lot of these concepts are things that you're gonna find within com uh, programming languages. For example, functions, they're very popular and they do work in there in very similar ways. Anyway, guys, I am going to end off the video here. Once again, just play around with these, you will get used to them. But for now, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.